Well, good morning, my friends. Happy Friday. That's what the girl said to me at the gym when I walked in this morning at the desk. Cat. I said, you know, many years ago, I just decided to count every day. Just so appreciative of every single day and what it had, no matter it was Friday, the weekend. Anyway, I'll say happy Friday anyway, because a lot of people are looking forward to being able to do some fun activities over the weekend with their family. So, happy Friday. Today is February 16th, 2024, and I come to you again with Robert Henderson's book, 365 Persian Activations for Entering the Courts of Heaven. And uh, the title today is Silencing the Sound of Wrong Motives and money. And the first scripture reference comes from the book of Job in verse 1 and 5 and 5 to 6, which reads it like this. So it was when the days of uh, feasting had run their course that Job would send and sanctify them. And he would rise early in the morning and offer burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, it may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus, Job did regularly. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. You know who the sons of God are. And Satan also came among them. Wow. That is some good scripture to dive into. So Robert goes on to say this. At first appearance, it might seem like Job's activities in behalf of his children were godly and right. I always thought that. However, when the devil made his case against Job, his accusation was that he wasn't serving God from pure heart. And... Uh, he references that in Job 1 and 9 through 11. Satan accused Job of only serving God because of how much that God had blessed him. Where did Satan give the evidence to bring such a case against Job? Well, it came from the offerings that Job brought with a sound of fear and manipulation. It could appear that through offerings, Job was seeking to manipulate God, not to judge his children for their sins. This was driven by his fear and not real faith. And that's referenced in Job 3 and 25. This testimony or sound attached to Job's offering was grabbed by Satan in the spirit world as they were presented to speak against Job rather than for him. If we have ever been party to bring in an offering to manipulate God, the testimony of this offering must be silenced so that it does not speak against us us. Wow. And this is Robert's prayer today. Lord, as I come before your courts, I repent of any offering that I may have brought to manipulate rather than to worship and adore you. I know your word declares that my offering must be from a cheerful and even hilarious heart. And he references 2 Corinthians 9 and 7 at that aspect of the prayer. This is what speaks before you in my behalf. May your blood speak in my behalf before your courts and revoke every right of any previous offerings that had any form of manipulation and fear attached to them to speak against me. May my offerings now be from a cheerful and a pure heart and speak and cause your heart to be stirred towards me. And what belongs to me. Uh, you know, uh, 
and we talk about it periodically, you know, about our tithes and offerings and that uh, you really do get blessed when you tithe and when you offer above your tithe. Um, but that's not a reason to do it. Um, you really do it out of worship to God, gladly with joy, and in obedience to his word. And uh, it just turns out that he just he takes care of you. I could just testify to that over and over and over again. I can testify it right now, actually right now in my life. So uh, I know we talked about that the other day. It came up in one of the readings. And uh, if you think you don't, quote unquote, have enough money to tithe, you're, you couldn't be more wrong. So um, get with the Lord on that and just sit with him. Let him speak to you about it. Let him speak to you. There's no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. So uh, this will be my prayer today. Uh, Lord Jesus, we thank you for this day, God. Father in heaven, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for this life, God. Thank you for the very breath, Lord. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your holy guidance. Thank you for your protection. Thank you for your provision. You are Jehovah Jireh, our provider. And we gladly give. We gladly give. As the scripture says, hilarious. We joy. We just, we gladly give, God. Lord, if there's anything, God, if there's anything in our hearts, anything in our spirit, anything that's got an attachment of manipulation, God, I pray that you bring it to our, bring it to the surface, God, bring it to, bring it to our minds and uh, show us it so that we can repent, God, confess it, confess it and repent, Lord, ask forgiveness and move on. Thank you that you're a forgiving God, that no matter what happens, that you forgive over and over and over again. We love you so much. You are beautiful, Lord. You are holy. This relationship with you is rich. It's deep. Thank you, Lord, that you touch my heart. Constantly. Thank you that you helped me be more alive than I ever was without you. Thank you that when I look around, God, I see your creation, Lord, and I just marvel at it. Help me to marvel at every single thing and just not miss one today. Thank you that we can worship you 24-7 and that we could pray without ceasing. That's actually possible, Lord. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for being the good, good Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, I hope you have a really excellent day, blessed day, God-filled, God-centered day. And like I said yesterday, um, you go back to the 14th. If you haven't received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you go back to the four video I did on the 14th. Um, I have that conversation about understanding why this relationship and giving your life to Jesus is so important. Uh, it's a matter of life and death. It really is. So just know that I love you. He loves you so much more.